Thank you. Thank you, B, for the nice introduction. Um, so today I'm going to be covering this, this topic, how to go from projects to products. And your client's website project should be approached as a product. That's my main thesis for, for today. And I see many clients and agencies, uh, you know, they see a website as a one-off. And in fact, it's not a, a, a one-off. There's, there's a lot of ongoing concerns we need, we need to have in mind. So what we're going to be talking today is I'm going to be covering why value is in the, in the eye of the beholder. Uh, what does it mean to approach a website as a product? Why is it important? I'll then compare traditional projects, website building projects, versus approaching them as products, so we understand the differences. And then I'll share free case studies and also free key principles in order to make this work in our experience. And then final notes and, and conclusion. So before I get into the material, I would like to share a small story with you, which is uh, my friend, Joanne, she got into a family fight a few years ago. Uh, her grandmother ha had just passed away. Um, so it was very sad, a very sad moment. And in that moment, in that time, one of the things um, they had to do as a family after her passing was, you know, go through all of her grandmother's uh, things and stuff that she had at home and decide what things uh, to keep, what things to, to throw away, what, what to do with, with those things. So it was a very serious and, and sad moment. And during that time, um, my friend, she found uh, uh, an embroid embroidery. I think that's, that's the way you say it. It's a handmade thing like, like this one. But the one she found was very, very old. Okay, almost a hundred years old. And uh, it was very dusty, um, and no one in the family gave it any value, you know. It, it didn't seem to have any value at that time. But because it was uh, her grandmother, she, she took it, she started cleaning it, she put it on a nice frame, and she hanged it on the wall at her house. So what happened next is the real kicker, because when her family uh, went to her house and saw it on the wall, they all started, oh, that's really nice. I, I want that for me. Uh, so this is a story that illustrates something very important, which is value is something that is perceived. Uh, it's not actual reality. It's, it's a perception. And as a perception, it can be influenced. And this is something very important for us to understand as WordPress professionals when we speak to clients and when we sell services. So what does it mean to approach a website build as a product? For me, it comes down to this formula, which is essentially agile development, and that means working with an open-ended scope on a monthly retainer. It means doing user-centered design, data-driven decisions, and client deep dives. And I'm going to explain what I mean by, by those. But first, I want to explain why I came up with this formula in the first place. The first reason is a website is no longer just that. You know, for many businesses, a website is an essential tool. It's going to deliver results. It's going to impact the business. Uh, so it's really important that we don't approach it as a one-off, but we keep doing continuous improvements. We keep um, monitoring it. We keep improving it over time. The second reason is I wanted to grow my own WordPress agency <laughs> and essentially one-off projects plus maintenance plans or, or uh, support packages isn't really 
a scalable way to grow an agency. So retainers is a much better approach for, for growth as, as an agency. So that was a reason as well. And just a quick rundown of the numbers here. You can see if imagine a year you're doing 15 projects on an average uh, 50,000K project, you'll do a, a revenue of 225K. Let's imagine next year you want to grow. So y you aim to do 20 projects at 20K. Okay, 400K, that's pretty interesting, but there's, a, there's effort in that, in that jump already. But let's say you have 15 clients at 3,500 per month, and you actually cut the projects in half. So you don't need to stop doing projects completely, but now you have these ongoing retainers uh, with 15 other clients. And suddenly, you're almost close to a million. So it, it's quite a different business model, right? If you want to take a picture. And I think a lot of WordPress professionals are leaving money on the table by, by not understanding this. The fourth reason is by approaching a website as a product and working alongside with the client on an ongoing basis, you get to, to go from just a vendor to really being a partner and that, that's where you want to be, that thought strategic partner that helps you, that understands your business. So that when the client thinks, oh, I actually have a cheaper vendor here that I could go work with, okay, but these guys, they really understand my business. <laughs> I mean, I've been with them for so long. Uh, they know exactly our pain points, how we work, our challenges, our team, etc. It's really a hassle to, to, to change. And lastly, I also wanted to increase team satisfaction. <laughs> it's very important today in the, in the current market to retain talent. And something I saw, we had many happy clients over the years, but when working on projects, you know, towards the end of the project, there's always bug fixing and stressing with deadlines uh, and all kinds of things that kind of leave the team on a low point rather than on a high, you know? And so that was a concern as well. And we're going to see how Using this approach, you actually increase team satisfaction. So how, how does it work and how does it compare to a traditional project? Well, very simply, before a project, you know, you plan and, and, and maybe you create a specification of what's involved in building the website, how many pages it's going to be, etc. You kind of do an estimation of the work involved, you do a budget so you can present it uh, to, to the client or maybe internally, but the risk is, is really all on you because if you miss that estimate, if it's wrong, you're going to lose money. Now before approaching, if we approach it as a product, we're going to, to do it differently. So first we start by doing a discovery session and preparation meetings with the client. And those are, are paid, paid meetings. Um, we start by estimating what resources we need to put on, on the development. Instead of estimating work, we're, we are really estimating, okay, how many developers, how many front-end developers, how many back-end developers. Um, so it's, it's a different approach. And we just need to share our rate card, our, our, our price for those resources. We're not doing guesses or on what the price should be. So it's a, it's a monthly fee for those resources and, and that's it, nothing more. So it's not inflated. And the risk is really shared between us and the client as it should be because at the end, it's their product we're building. So during the project, it's also very different. You know, during a project, you have a, a, a frozen feature set. We cannot put more things into without at least without charging extra. Uh, 
sometimes people do inflated budgets to, to account for this risk, but it's really never, um, uh, there's, there's no magic formula to get it right. And the incentive is really do it as fast as possible so we can earn more money instead of let's build the best thing we can build. And of course, we use project man management tools like gun, gun charts, ticketing, etc. If we approach it as a product, we can always add new features from month to month, from release to release. We, we can prioritize and add new things. It's based on time and materials, so it's based on iterations. And the incentive is really build the best thing possible, right? We're not uh, stressed by, by the time itself. And we use product improvement tools, you know, like heat maps, uh, like user voice, uh, interviews, so we get feedback and we can improve the website. After, it's also very different. <laughs> On a project basis, we kind of tend to celebrate the launch like it's a big milestone, but it's actually, I find that to be a misleading uh, practice because um, imagine you develop a new product and you put it on the shelf and you're celebrating, but then no one grabs the product from the shelf. Is that really a success? I'm not sure, right? But we tend to do that with websites. Um, normally there's a warranty period, perhaps you have one, and then we sell maintenance packages to clients. Uh, and success here is really measured by delivering on time, on budget, on quality. That's how typically projects are evaluated. If we approach it as a product, it's very different. We're releasing every week or every month. We're adding new things. We're adding improvements. There's sim seamless continuity with existing systems, so we don't break what, what's there already. And we can even schedule spring cleanings, meaning we can clean uh, technical depth, we can refactor code, we can uh, you know, delete those unused plugins, et cetera, et cetera, right? We don't need to be rushing all the time. And success here needs to be measured by the adoption in the market of what we're building. That's really the end goal, to have more users and happy users. So how do we sell this type of ongoing collaboration to clients? I think that that's a really important question because you know not all clients will be right for this type of approach. Not all clients will be ready for it as well. But I think there's, there's a few important points. The first one is education. We need to educate the user and the client about the value we bring to the table and how important the website will be and how important the ongoing aspect of this collaboration is in his own view, right? We need to put ourselves in his shoes. The other one is, is framing, right? So framing has to do with the words we choose, how we appear to the client, where we meet him, uh, you know, our sales pitch, our presentation. Uh, that's all a frame that will help the client see us as low value or high value. And we really want to be on this end. And then also social proof. Here, it could be a video testimonial. Uh, it could be even a call with one of our clients explaining to a potential client how it is working with us. That, that's really strong. Of course, there's other ways, but here's, those, here's a, a few ideas. On the WordPress space, I see also a lot of clients that see WordPress work as low value. I'm not sure if you've come across those. I'm sure you have. Sometimes they see WordPress developers almost as factory workers. They're there 80 hours a day coding away uh, and we're just going to pay them to do some stuff. And the sad part is even some agencies, they see developers that way as well, as factory workers. And we're really not factory workers. <laughs> we're creative problem solvers. We're solving problems for the business. 
and a developer can solve a problem so important for the business that maybe the business 10x its value, right? So that's what we have to understand. So some examples, some case studies uh, for you to, to understand what I'm speaking about. For example, approaching a news media, news publishing website as a product. Uh, what have we done here? We've um, may, uh, had preparation uh, sessions with the client, we prepared the roadmap, we defined how many resources are going to be um, on the development side, and we even moved on site with the client. <laughs> so this is actually a photo of the team in the client office, uh, in their office. We, we spent there a few months. Of course, this was pre-pandemic. Now we would have to, to find another way to be close to them. Um, but this was really a feeling of, okay, we're working on more than just a, a project. It's really a product the way we're working. And this is where it all started to, to come um, clear of, of this way of working is different. So a first principle I think is very important is doing client deep dives. And this is not just meeting with the client, but also gathering in-depth information about them, learning about their goals, their needs, uh, doing market analysis, competitor analysis, all those things, uh, and especially being very close to, to the C-level and to, to executives, because what we've seen is when, when you use this type of approach, it's normal that clients stay with you for many years. And if you're only interacting with the project manager or the CTO on their side, uh, most likely those people over the years will leave and, and other people will come. So you need to stay in contact really with the C-level so you, you, you keep that strategic partnership up. A second case study is an e-commerce as a product. We approached uh, Freshland, uh, an e-commerce startup in, in Denmark. Really, we, we approached them as, as a product. And this is uh, our Git commit uh, punch card. You can see the weekly contributions uh, happening on all days of, of the week, uh, from April to, to January. And it, it's really um, an ongoing um, continuous improvement uh, uh, approach. And the key principle here we used was user-centered design. So not just designing and approving with the client, but also involving their, the final user in that process and making sure adoption is, is going okay. It's, it's actually being adopted by the users. They're not feeling uh, confused or blocked people are using what, what we've built in, in the correct way. And so, of course, this has to do with understanding uh, the users, interviewing them, maybe recording them, etc. There's several, several ways, but this is a key principle as well. The third case study I wanted to bring you is actually a product website as a product. <laughs> and so, or if you prefer, a startup website as a product. So unbabble.com is a website we work continuously. So we're always making improvements to it uh, through a, an ongoing monthly retainer, like I'm explaining here to you. And we're always measuring, monitoring, improving. And really the key principle here is data-driven decisions so we can Prior, give priority to the best improvements uh, that make sense. And so my, my friend Tiago Martins, uh, he always says, uh, I always ask the client if they have data. If I have data, I'm able to make <coughs> smarter decisions, right? And this is really key. If we don't have data, we're just guessing, and it's much harder. So here we need to measure and improve. We need to you know, learn and also adapt to that data that is coming in. It's very hard to predict how users will behave. So we need to really see the data to understand. And I think here the secret is to do a quarterly 
planning, but then you need to do weekly progress, right? You need to monitor those metrics weekly so you know what's going on and also set targets to improve. So final notes, we're really about selling value and approaching a website as a product is, is this ongoing relationship. And we really need to you know, see it better. We need, like my, my friend, at, at, at the story I told you, my friend actually saw that embroidery and she made it, she transformed it, she saw it better. And we need to do that for our clients. We cannot just leave it for the client to see, to see it better. We need to be an active part of that. We need to help them see, okay, your business is here, but actually in, a, in three years, it could really be here. And if we want that, in one year, we're going to need to be here and this quarter, we're going to need to be here. <laughs> so it's all aligned, you know? And we cannot just leave that for the client. We have to help in that process. Not from a, a superior place, but at the same level, we need to show them what's possible. So as a web agency, my, my advice and my lesson here is we should really approach more client websites as, as products rather than one-off with maintenance plans. Uh, I'm really strongly advising not go, don't go for maintenance because we don't want maintenance. <laughs> the client many times they also don't want maintenance. They think they want maintenance but what they really want is the business to grow, right? So don't just build websites, but go out there and create amazing products. Okay, thank you very much.